God is in his spirit. Ezekiel says, And he said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, that I may speak to you. As he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. And I heard what was being said, spoken to me. This is God speaking to a man, who is Ezekiel, but he does not hear God speaking until at the same moment a spirit enters him and sets him upon his feet. A spirit of God entering man and God speaking means the angel of God's presence, <clears throat> who is the Holy Spirit, alighted upon him and entered him, and God is in him. Just as the Spirit of God alights upon and enters Moshe of Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Anytime an angel or spirit is present in a story and God speaks or his power is revealed, the angel or spirit is the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. The reason he's an angel and spirit is wherever God's presence is, the angel of his presence is there also. Wherever God's presence is, his Holy Spirit is there too. And they both appear in <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 63. One verse after another. And it's made clear because the Holy Spirit is said to be grieved if the Israelites do not obey God. You have to be a person to be grieved. And there's lots of other references to it. <clears throat> The person of God's Spirit is his constant companion that he created, and the reason any man he comes to is a man in divine beings, a host of the Lord's host. This is who Jacob said he wrestled with, and Elohim spoke and renamed him Israel, a man in divine beings. Well, God's always, they're, they're together. Angel of his presence, God's presence. If he comes to you, he's going to have his spirit enter you, and he is in his spirit. Moses tells the Israelites that God is here in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may be ever with you. God had Moses set a rule before the Israelites regarding the angel he sent to guard them, on the way and to bring them to the place that he had made ready. Pay heed to him. Do not defy him, for he will not pardon your offenses, since my name, Hashem, is in him. But if you obey him and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. That's Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 through 22. God had Moses set a rule before the Israelites regarding the angel. There are no orders, instructions, rules, or commandments between an angel and Moses or an angel and the Israelites. They all come from Moses, who receives them from God. This angel is the Holy Spirit, and that spirit has alighted upon and entered into Moses. And he can hear God speak, just like Ezekiel. Moses is a man in divine beings. It just means God has come to you, he's in your spirit, his spirit enters you, God enters you, and you are suddenly a man in divine beings being given tasks that God wants to perform. A man with divine beings is a host of the Lord's host, the descendant of King David that the Spirit of God alights upon is a host of the Lord's host, one God, 
one angel, the Holy Spirit, and one man. The account of a man who identified himself to Joshua as a Gentile and captain of the Lord's host in the book of Joshua is the first and only time the scripture describes a host of the Lord's host. The captain of the Lord's host is a host. This is from the book of Joshua. Once, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing before him, drawn sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and asked him, Are you one of us or of our enemies? Are you an Israelite? He replied, No. I am captain of the Lord's host. Now I have come. Joshua threw himself face down to the ground and prostrating himself said to him, What does my Lord command his servant? The captain of the Lord's host answered, Answer Joshua, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. That's chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. So, so Joshua threw himself to the ground before a man with a drawn sword that had just told him that he was a Gentile, not an Israelite, and said, What does my Lord command his servant? Now the man said he was a captain, not a lord or the lord. The captain answered, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. These are the same words God spoke to Moses at the burning bush. God is with the captain because the land where Joshua stands is holy. And where God is, so is the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. So the captain is a man in divine banks, which is a host of the Lord's host. The captain said, now I have come, and he is never mentioned in the scripture again. He is a harbinger of God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53, upon whom the Spirit of God alights in chapter 11, making him a man in divine beings. Elijah, not Elijah, let me get to Ezekiel, no, Moses. This is Moses and Joshua the attendant. Joshua the attendant was named Hoshi in the Exodus. From chapter 13, verse 8. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshi, son of Nun. That's Numbers chapter 13, verse 8. And his name was changed to Joshua by Moses. Those were the names of the men whom Moses sent to scout the land. But Moses changed the name of Hoshi, son of Nun, to Joshua. That's Numbers chapter 13, verse 16. On the first ascent of Moses to the mountain for 40 days and nights and returned with the Ten Commandments, his attendant Joshua was with him. He just he went with him up the mountain, but he didn't go all the way to the top as Moses did. And he waited for him to come back down. After Moses descended and would enter the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. And he then would return to the tent. But his attendant, Joshua, son of Nun, a youth, would not stir out of the tent. And jo Joshua's name was Hoshi at this time, though the references are to Joshua. Joshua did not leave the tent of meeting where Moses would speak to God face to face. And at this time, the face of Moses was not seen as radiant. When Moses ascends the mountain a second time for 40 days and nights and returns with the Ten Commandments, the skin of his face is radiant, and thereafter when he enters and exits the tent of meetings, 
the skin of this face you've laid in. And Hoshi is not mentioned again on the mountain or in the tent. Joshua the attendant represents the person of the spirit of the holy God, the angel of his presence, <clears throat> who has a light upon and dwells within and without Moses, and God is in his spirit. As he was in the angel of the Lord in the burning bush. It says Moses Moses saw a bush that was not consumed. And it said in the bush was the angel of the Lord. That would be the angel of his presence. And although you, Moses couldn't see, there's no account that he actually saw an angel of the Lord. But God speaks. He's in the angel of the Lord. He's in his spirit. The spirit of the Holy God. Moses had become right. So he's left some answer there. But God is in the tent talking to Moses, tent of meeting, talking to Moses face to face. Moses leaves, goes back to camp, and Joshua, the attendant, Hoshi, doesn't leave. So what do you have inside the tent? God and the Holy Spirit. Divine beings. Moses and the seventy elders. God tells Moses, I will draw upon the spirit that is on you and put it upon them. They shall share the burden of the people with you, and you shall not bear it alone. That's Numbers chapter 11, verse 17. And then God drew upon the spirit that was on him and put it upon the seventy elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they spoke in ecstasy, but did not continue. That's Numbers chapter 11, verse 25. The Spirit that was drawn from Moses and put upon the 70 elders is not the Spirit <clears throat> that was born in Moses and was Moses, the same Spirit that is in all men, what was drawn from Moses was the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is a person, the first person created by God. The 70 elders had become hosts of the Lord's host with the purpose of God that they share the burden of the people with Moses. When each heard the angelic voice of the Spirit of God speak to them, they became very excited and were saying all kinds of different things depending on what the person of the Spirit of God was saying to them. The important part for Moses is that each of the seventy would now in one accord have the idea and thought that they would share the burden of the people with Moses. There is no account of God commanding the seventy elders to share the burden of the people with Moses. Now, God could have been the one that spoke to him. Because they're together, they're like two clouds. The elements of God's presence is his mind. Okay, the elements of spirit is totally different. But like two clouds that can just float by in the sky and become one cloud, that's what we're talking about. That's what enters the man. And they would also be without him, within and without. The word of the Lord and Elijah. This is from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 8 through 16. Summarized. Elijah walked 40 days and 40 nights as far as the mountain of God at Oreb. There he went into the cave, and there he spent the night. Then the word of the Lord came to him. He said to him, Why are you here, Elijah? Elijah answers, and the word of the Lord calls, Come out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. To the word of the Lord, he, that's the messenger, that's the angel, that's the Holy Spirit. He can deliver God's words to a man. So he's out at the front of the cave, and he's being told, Come out here and stand before the Lord. 
the Lord passed by, and his power is revealed in a great destructive wind, an earthquake and fire, but the Lord is not in them. And then a soft murmuring sound, footnoted to be a still small voice. Elijah heard this, wrapped his mantle about his face, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave, where a voice addressed him, which is the Lord. Why are you here, Elijah? So the word of the Lord had come and said that to Elijah. Now God has passed by and revealed his power, and his voice is coming to Elijah. But he's not at the cave. He passed by. Elijah answers, and the Lord instructs him to go to Damascus and anoint Haziel as king of the land, Jehu as king of Israel, and Elisha as the prophet to succeed him. The soft murmuring sound, a still small voice, would be the same words from God that the word of the Lord has spoken based on one question having already been asked twice before, which, which was, why are you here, Elijah? And then come out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And for the reason that is what Elijah did after hearing the still small voice. Elijah ignored the word of the Lord, the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit, and was unmoved by God's power. But a whisper from God himself had the desired results of Elijah going to the front of the cave. The person of the Spirit of the Holy God speaks the words of the Lord to man as one person to another person. And it is the word of the Lord throughout the Hebrew Bible. The person of the Spirit of the Holy God is an angelic messenger of the Lord's words. He is the angel of his presence and the Holy Spirit. His, his angelic body, basically God created an angel. And for his body, he did not give him, he did not give him human form with wings. His body is literally the Spirit of God. The angel of his presence, wherever God's presence is, his presence is. Holy Spirit, wherever God's presence is, Holy Spirit is there. So he's got an angel with the body of the Holy Spirit. And he shows up as both in Isaiah 63. In one verse, he specifically referred to as the angel of his presence, I think it's 10. And in the next verse, he's referred to as the Holy Spirit. Do the same. 